Hello and welcome to the BCU Alumni Podcast. I'm Bethan from BCU's alumni team and in each episode we welcome a different member of the alumni community back onto campus to tell us what they've been up to since they graduated. Today we're joined by Wee Lun Fee, a first team nutritionist at Premier League Football Club Tottenham Hotspur. After graduating from BCU with a BSc in Sport and Exercise Nutrition in 2020, Wee went on to work at West Ham United and is now based at Spurs whilst also completing a PhD in Sports Nutrition in Liverpool. In this episode, we are going to find out more about Wee's career so far, as well as what goes into being a nutritionist and what it's like to work for a Premier League football club. Wee, thanks so much for coming into the studio today. Yeah, thanks very much for having me. You graduated three years ago now, so what's it been like to be back on campus today? Um, it's it's amazing to be back because I haven't been back since I graduated because I've been like, so like busy for on after that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's good to be back and then it's good to you know see the facility again because I had so much great memories over here. So yeah, it's just uh, amazing to be back. I didn't manage to see my lecture obviously they're all up, but yeah, it's just good to be back. Um, yeah, I have so so much like good good time uh, in yeah. BCU. Uh, that's because that's where everything like begins. Um. So where I, where I started, like actually get into sport nutrition because before that I was in Ireland, uh, I was like doing sports science and, and then I want to get into sport nutrition. That's how I so like move into. So yeah, it's good to be back, good to see the campus again. So what was it that led you to study sport and exercise nutrition in the first place then? Yeah, I think since I was young, I was very interested in sport. Like I play table tennis and also badminton like competitively yeah. uh, when I was young, since I was nine. Um, throughout my high school I played those two sports and then also I do other sports as well like basketball obviously football yeah. I grew up watching uh, Premier League um, since I was like 10 or 11 yeah um, so that's how my interest in sport and then after I definitely want to get do something related to sport so when I first finished my high school I was in Malaysia just to everyone know so I want to get into something in sport mm-hmm. and then it's sport in Malaysia is not that popular so there's not a lot of job opportunity around so I decided to move to Ireland um, I was doing a sports science over there and for just for the listener know sports science is very general so in the course you will learn about psychology strength conditioning and then you only do a little bit about nutrition so you wouldn't do much probably just like a module and and then I want to get into more and then especially after listen to a few like podcasts after doing more readings hmm. um, I definitely want to get into that nutrition I'm more I'm not, I'm interested in food, but I'm not like a big like foodie person. I'm not more interested in like biochemistry, like the metabolism side. Mm-hmm. So that that's probably why I got into PhD as well, um, because I'm really into, interested in that side. That's why I moved to BCU to do sport and science nutrition. I think at that time, BCU is like one of the few courses that's all like recognized by sport and exercise nutrition register right. um, in UK. So I think only if, five or six and then I remember when I was trying to make my decision I emailed uh, Marco which is the so I like the course lead for mm-hmm. that module and then he replied me like nine <laughs> uh, at night so he replied to my email with a very detailed answer and then since then I so I decided okay I'm going to like, study in at BCU. So after graduating then, what were those initial steps like for you? Did you already have uh, like a good idea of what it is that you wanted to go on and do? Yeah, um, it was difficult at that time because it was COVID uh, 2020. So that's like minimum to none opportunity around. But I did apply for a few PhD uh, mm-hmm. at the time. And then I got to the interview stage, uh, but I got rejected at that time. Uh, obviously, I just finished my undergraduate. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, one is with BCU. Actually, it's with Wolf, the PhD I got rejected. But um, yeah, so I was quite disappointed at that time because I thought that, you know, I so I like, gave everything um, yeah. during my undergraduate. I got like first, uh, I got for a few placements. I did well in my dissertation. So like disappointed I didn't like get something immediately after. Um, but looking back now, I probably quite, I, I'm so like thankful to Mark to reject me for that PhD because I wouldn't be doing a good job if I got a PhD at that time. Um, so I definitely want to go into PhD. Uh, obviously that's like no for me at that time so mm-hmm. I went to do did a master in sport nutrition which is um, again it was an amazing experience even though we have to spend all our time like studying online uh, just in our room because yeah, of COVID okay, there's no face-to-face learning at that time uh, but I met a few like important 
uh, people that sort of like brought me where I'm here now. Um, so I think the first one is uh, Dr. Jose Areta. So he's a supervisor for my master dissertation project. Mm -hmm. And then that uh, dissertation got published as well. And then also he, after my, fin when I finished my master, he offered me the opportunity to do like a research assistant right. role. So like helping his PhD student uh, with a research project. So that's the, probably the first few, like five or six months when I finished my master. And then after that as well, I also, during my master, I also met uh, Matt Jones, who, who is the nutritionist for West Ham men's first team. Right. And then also the Scotland uh, national team as well. So at that time, when I started my master, I saw I reach out to him. So I just say, can I have a chat to learn about what you're doing? Um, I'm just interested in it. And then at the start, it's more like a conversation. And then he was very helpful as well. And then he also gave me a job at that time um, because he got so much team. At that time, he also worked, worked for Brentford and Chelsea women uh, right. when I was working with him. So he asked me to do like, you know, meal planning. Sometimes he asked me to do research review and then he paid me every month during that COVID time. So throughout my master, I was, I was working with him. Yeah. And then after that, he say, when I finish my master, there's like a part-time opportunity coming out uh, for West Ham. Um, so I so I got that position straight away. Um, so I'm working with the academy and women's team. And then we can touch about that a little bit more and then I transition to full-time uh, afterwards. So that's the second like important person. And then the third one is like Professor James Morden, um, who I always look out to in sport nutrition, one of the, one of the big names uh, in sport nutrition. Mm -hmm. So I always want to like, follow his research and then I really like his work and both apply and research as well. And then who who is now my PhD supervisor. Right. So <laughs> so he's one of the supervisors for my master project. Um and then yes, just been very helpful and then we can talk about top how I get the Tottenham job later on. He's one of the supervisors I reach out to him and then he's part of the uh on the interview panel as well when I'm trying to interview for the for the Spurs job. Um, and then the other one is actually Nigel Mitchell. So he's a nutritionist in English Institute of Sport. He's one of the uh, technical lead, so quite high position and very experienced, probably one of the first uh, sport nutritionists in UK. Mm -hmm. So he gave me a lot of like interview advice. So whenever I go interview coming out, I always like text him, message him like, what are they looking for in this interview? And then we will do like more interview sometime. So he gave me a lot of advice. And then sometimes, well, if there's any job, because he know like a lot of people, a lot of the nutritionists now, he's also, he's a uh, mentee before. Um, so he, when there's a job opportunity come out, he'll message me or put my name forward. Sometimes it's good to, like, I really like, looking back, I glad that I made that decision to do master in sport nutrition because I knew a lot of people over there. And then sometimes it's not just like, who you know as well, like mm. who know you is quite important as well. Um, so yeah, I'm really grateful that I got that opportunity. So what was it like working for West Ham then? Mm. So at West Ham, um, at the start, I think the first six months, I was like part-time. Um, I joined in middle of the season. So I spent one day with, with the women's team and then one day with, with the academy. So um, yeah, so academy means like from under nine all the way to under twenty one, mm -hmm. which is uh, which is a big job. So I think uh, at part part time you more like a consultant. So whenever there's a problem coming out, a player need advice, then you will so like get involved. Um, which I probably not don't. I don't like that that much because I prefer to be like fully invested in the team. And then yeah. after the first six months. I managed to transition to full-time position. So we, my week looks very different every week because just the schedule is very different. So mm -hmm. I would do like half for the women's team and half for the academy. So I normally, for the academy, normally I would be, I try to schedule in the day before the game. So I can do like hydration testing on the gate the day before, and then maybe I can pack some high carbohydrate snacks for the player so that I can make sure their nutrition strategy is nailed on on the day before the game. And then I also travel with the women's team so to the game. So I would do the games for the women's team, like making sure they all they, are, they got everything they need before, yeah. during, and after the game. So I would do that, do everything for that. Um, so it was quite busy at that time. Sometimes because the the younger player, like under 15, 16, 
they come in in the evening so sometimes i would stay late just to do like some education workshop mm. to them and then for even the younger like under 11 12 um, i would do some workshop with the parents um, so yeah it range quite a lot i really enjoy it because i learned so much from that role uh, because it challenged me in a lot of different way yeah because on the day you could speak to a lady um, like senior women's player and then you can even speak to a young player on on the same day as well yeah. so because they all train at the same same site the training training center is uh, they're all based in one area so it's good to you know expose yourself to different challenge so i learned a lot in that but it was quite quite challenging quite busy sometime i i saw like in six days per week just to get everything done so it was quite intense but i learned a lot from from that role so you're now the first team nutritionist at Spurs mm-hmm. then. So can you talk us through how that opportunity came about? Yeah, so when I at West Ham, I actually, because I really enjoy my, my job at West Ham, I didn't like plan to live at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I saw this opportunity coming up. It's like a, like a dream for me. Yeah. Because I always want to work in first team in Premier League. And I also want to do PhD at the same time as well. So this role is like the perfect opportunity for me. And then the supervisor is who I look out to. So I, I couldn't plan this and any any better. I think this is just for me. So when I first went to it, I didn't have any like expectation. I just like I put my CV, put my cover letter in, and then it was quite a long process. Well, the hiring process, I think you have to do like a proposal, and then you have to, you have to go for a face to face interview. So and then also I reached out to my supervisor as well, uh, James Morden at that time, just to learn more about the the project they're trying to do. Um, and then I also know that because there's o- already a few nutritionist experts, mm-hmm. so there wouldn't be like I got time to do my PhD because sometimes if you are only the only one and then you, you need to do your PhD at the same time, mm. it's nearly impossible because you have to travel to to the games. And then for Premier League, there's so many games like a top level team that can play up to maybe 50 or 60 games per season. So you just don't have time for your PhD if you are just by yourself. So I know that if I go into there, um, I got time to do my PhD, which is like a luxury because yeah. most of the time nutrition is going to be quite busy. You just want and then you work with 20 or 30 uh, players. So yeah, that's how it came about. Um, I just feel like it's so like a perfect opportunity for me. Um, I'm glad that I got it. Hmm. So what really goes into being a nutritionist then? And, and also, can you talk us through what your like responsibilities include? Mm. Yeah, I think nutritionists it changed a lot in the last uh, few years because before that, it was mainly like part-time nutritionists. And whereas now you see more and more full-time nutritionists. Um, and then obviously it, ranged, it can be different between club because of the funding, like what level of detail you can go into. I'm just going to talk to experts so we have like three nutritionists so we have a uh, emma tester she's the head of nutrition so we, she would more like do the management side mm-hmm. uh, menu planning partnership um, and then formalize nutrition strategy and then we have like a uh, panos makakis which is he's the match day nutritionist so he would travel to the game w- w- and then take care of what the player need before mm-hmm. during after the game and whereas me my main role is to get my PhD done and then using my PhD to inform the nutrition strategy at the club but also do like other roles as well like providing nutrition advice and meal planning for mainly for the injured player Mm -hmm. and then for some of the young player coming out who's trying to gain master so I will provide advice right and then also do some um, creating content like the infographic for the restaurant yeah. Um, and then like the feedback if, if we've done a hydration testing the feedback where well, one pager I would do that as well and then also all the not so fun side uh, in football club where nutrition needs to do like topping our water bottle yeah. pill box uh, making protein shape but they are really important stuff so I'll be a mixture of those things and then obviously it's, it's, I will spend some of the, my day doing my PhD like writing ethic data collection like the first study I'm doing an interview with the player so I'll grab the play after training, doing the interview, and then, yeah. So it it vary every day depending yeah. on the need, but yeah. So that's my so like role uh, at at the club. Okay, so what mm. is it really like then to work for a Premier League club, and do you get to know the players personally? Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, obviously, we see see them every day. Um, I think at the start, 
almost feel a little bit like surreal because yeah you see them on TV um and then now you sort of like seeing seeing them every day, yeah. but what sort of like strike me is they actually not. They don't have really high ego. They're actually really, really nice person. Uh, mm-hmm. Most of them, like they were really good. Like they were actually trying to talk to you as well, trying to learn where you're coming from. I feel really welcome at the start. It's difficult for me because I joined so like mid season, when the season is already going. Yeah. Um. So, but yeah, the players actually make effort and trying to accept you, trying to welcome you. So that's like very very helpful for me. Um. So I think working in the Premier League sometimes can be quite intense mm. because of the schedule. Uh, sometimes the player, if there's like a three games per week, like the player will be in every day, and then preseason like as well. Sometimes it could be double double session, so they will train the uh, morning and then train the afternoon again. So the day will finish around six or seven. So it can be quite a long day in mm. Premier League. Sometimes you just need to accept that, and then also at the Premier League, like the standard is really high if you're trying because you're trying to be the best. So um, everything you do. Like everyone is watching what you do, so that's like almost for me, it's a good pressure, so that you sort of like try to push yourself, like mm-hmm. to be to be the best, and then like you get to know to the player as well. Um, I think a lot of them like you, you just because we, what we do is we use like a menu style system, I suppose. So every day the player will come in, they will pick like what they need to eat. Um, like every player have their own individual menu, so we actually got the time to actually learn about. What the player want to eat because most of the time football club there will be like a buffet style so the player will come out and pick. Whereas for us is we get the order in the morning and then the player will have pick whatever they want for lunch. Yeah. So we get to learn the player a little bit more from that. So yeah, it's good to see and then good to see the differences between. We got so many players from like different nationality as well. Um, it's good to just like know them. Mm. So yeah, it was for me I really enjoy it. Um uh, it's for me probably not for everyone because sometimes it can be a very long hour and early start. For me I really enjoy it. So what does a meal plan look like for a footballer then? Yeah, I think the meal plan is qu- depend it's quite different for individual. I I don't think like there will be two identical meal plans. Yeah. Um first of all it's bit pe- depends on the goal, like whether you're trying to gain muscle or whether you're trying to lose fat. Um, and then all for the injured player, whether you're trying to prevent muscle loss and try to speed up uh, the recovery from the injury. And then it very depends on the day as well. Um, how high is the training intensity? Mm. Uh, that will look very different on the low in tra- tra- training intensity day and then compared to the hard session day. And then also like the day before the game as well, normally the day before we're trying to push a little bit more carbohydrate and then also making sure the player hydrated and then also some of the supplement the strategy we use as well and then what you do before the game and then again before the game it depends on the time of the kickoff as well like is it early kickoff or 3 3 p.m kickoff or night kickoff mm. and, and then also after the game and then when is the next game coming out uh, is it coming out in two days time or week time so that would look very different i think a lot of education needed so sometimes what i would do is i would just do I would get the player to like send me photo of what they eat on that day and then I'll analyze it and then I'll provide feedback in terms of what they need to improve. Do they need more carbs or which are the nutrients they need to focus on? And then I will give them like just, I will create almost like an infographic, like a timeline, what they need to do on mm-hmm. a specific day, like the day before the game. And then this is what I did as well on a general restaurant. So a restaurant every day will put out like a timeline. So like what you, ideally need to eat on this day um, the, because we know that what type of training is coming out so whether you need more carbohydrate before training after training so we give like a timeline for the player and then also we do like blood as well so we know that like what player like let's say if the meat, vitamin d level is low then we have like supplement strategy for that mm-hmm. one so yeah it's quite personalized um, and then very day to day depending on what they, they are doing how do you keep them on track? Do you ever have any kind of issues like cheat days? Um, for me, I think it's, I think it's all about education. Um, you can't be, I don't see a point to like restrict the player, like too much saying that oh you can't do this, you can't do that because everything is about balance. I think you can still include like the food. I I don't want to call it like cheat food or junk food because for me it's they're probably less nutritious um than what other food. You compared to other food, but I think you can still include it part of your diet uh, as long as you're controlling the portions. And then also when 
knowing when to eat as well for the player. I think it's more about education. Like for instance, you probably don't want to eat it, eat like those or a very high fat food, uh, like a pizza or like a burger just before the game. So it's like yeah. educating them like when to do it. Like maybe the day before, probably you trying to stop that, and then for maybe after if you have a game coming out very soon, you probably don't want to eat something like not good for you mm. uh, on that. But it's educating them like when you can eat it and also the potion as well i think that's really important because sometimes if you become too restricted for the player like if you say to the player oh you can't eat any burger and the first thing they want to eat is the is burger or oh, you can't eat chocolate the first thing they want yeah. to eat is chocolate <laughs> so you can't restrict it. it's more about education um so i think in terms of the motivation as well i think obviously you got some player that's like very motivated want to get everything done like perfectly yeah. whereas you also got some player that are not very interested in nutrition they just want to play football mm-hmm. um so you get a uh, like two different spectrum but i think um as long as you educate them and if you show okay and then now we got the uh, like a lot of nutritionists so we actually can be with them every every meal time and then obviously we got control over the food as well what we can put out mm-hmm. uh, for breakfast lunch and then while during the game like pre mentioned so we so we got some level of control but i think the key thing is about education so this is something we like to do in every episode then a birmingham quick fire round mm. snobs or pop world i'm not a nightclub person but um probably uh pop world uh blues or villa uh spurs <laughs> <laughs> correct answer <laughs> um broad street or digbeth uh digbeth what's your favorite brummy landmark I I don't have a lemma, but when I think of Birmingham, I because I love badminton, so I think of all England badminton. So, um, not answering your question straight, but that's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> and what was your favourite like Brummy word? Um, Boston. Boston. <laughs> <laughs> love that one. Um, you've been selected as one of our industry icons at this year's alumni festival. So, what does that mean to you? Um, to be honest, I didn't even think about that because I literally just graduated like three years ago. So I feel like an honor to be like part of the industry icon because you got so mm-hmm. many, many graduates. So yeah, just uh, thanks for s- s- selecting me and hopefully uh, my my story, my journey can inspire someone. So maybe, um, so yeah, it's been, been a pleasure. And final question then, if you could go back to your very first day here at BCU, what is the one piece of advice that you would give yourself? I probably say uh, keep doing what you're doing, um, and then maybe don't give up. Um, yeah, just sometimes be patient as well, um, because you might not see the result or uh, get what you what the hard work you put in straight away. It might take some time. Just uh, be patient and keep doing what you're doing. Thanks so much for popping by today, we and coming onto the podcast. Yeah, thanks so much. We can't wait to see you again very soon. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs>